Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. One question we seem to get frequently both in comments and videos as well as even in person is, um, you know, for a lady that's trying to pick out a gun, what would be a gun gun for me? And in this video we're going to talk about some options and a recent experience we went through with a lady whose husband had passed away and he'd had a couple guns and she didn't know anything about them and she was interested in getting into guns so she contacted us. And before we go any further, you know, we mentioned ladies asking about guns. I know that many, many women are just as strong as a man and can handle anything they want to, but many aren't. So really, this is going to focus for those ladies who are not as strong and are looking for a gun or just simply don't have any experience in them. You know, if you're nice and strong and able to handle anything you want, you'll, you'll go find a gun that'll fit you. And we've got other videos on choosing calibers and choosing you know, your first gun, hammer versus striker, that might be suitable. But for this particular video, we'll be looking for ladies that are looking something they can handle, they can shoot, that fits their hands, and that their strength, they can operate the slide. So what we did with her is, first off, we went over and we talked to her, and we looked at the guns that she had, and what she had really wasn't suitable. There were, you know, some ring of fire guns that really weren't safe to operate and had probably wouldn't be something good to keep a hold of, as well as a couple long guns that for her home defense purposes wouldn't have been suitable, you know, a long barrel 22 and things like that. So what we did is we put together an assortment from our available guns that we have available to us, and we didn't bring these two this time, but I'm gonna talk about those, but we brought these. And what we were focusing on is bringing a revolver Revolvers are real popular, and for you know, we'll talk about some of the reasons why they might be a good choice. We brought a single stack 9mm. We MMP Shield the 2.0 version, which has a much nicer trigger than the prior versions. Of course, the ubiquitous Glock 19. This really fits into just about every I want to try a gun. This is a good choice to include in the mix. And we chose a Walther Creed. And this is a little bit bigger than the 19, but not oversized and still 9mm. And you'll notice the pattern here. We stuck with 9mm. Uh, had we included the Glock 42, it would have been a 380. And for the revolver, we chose a 38 Special. This particular one can also do plus P plus, so that you know, you've got the power available. Look for an upcoming review on this LCR. It's kind of a really cool hammerless or hidden hammer revolver, chambered, chambered 38. So we took these over to her house. We let her handle them in a, you know, just in the, in the kitchen on the table, away from the range, away from the noise of a range. And part of that is she's a first time shooter. So not only did we have to help her choose a firearm, but we also had to get past that first time at the range thing. And we've got a video on how to do that, how to take a first time shooter to the range. We'll put a link because sometimes you've got a bunch of complexities. You've got, you know, choosing the gun, trying to figure out what their strengths are. And at the same time, the first time going into an environment where guns are going off, an environment that typically people are trained to run away from rather than go into, and it can make the whole experience you know, challenging if you don't approach it step by step. So the first thing, we'll talk about this, and we showed her this, and we let her handle this, and she liked it. And one of the things that makes a revolver like this you know, attractive is it's fairly simple. There's only two controls on this thing. There's the release, and there's the trigger. Real simple on the control front. So not a lot to mess with, uh, easy to operate, easy to clean. You don't have to really take it apart. You know, to clean it, you pop the wheel out, you clean the parts and put the wheel back in, and, and really you're done. She liked the feel of it, it fit in her hand, but the trigger, even though this one is smooth, on these little hammerless revolvers tends to be kind of long and kind of heavy. And that did, she kind of liked it when she was at the table, when we actually got to the range and she started shooting it, two things caught her. One is she was having a hard time staying on target with that longer, heavier trigger. She had a tendency to pull off, which if you've got strong hands or you've got a lot of experience, that's not difficult at all. But for somebody that's new and doesn't have really strong hands, that could be a bit of a challenge. And because this is light, she was affected a little bit by the recoil. And that's one of the things that I see go wrong when I see somebody trying to, you know, help somebody pick out a gun who's not as strong. They immediately go to something small. 
And also, for some reason, if there's a woman involved, they have a tendency to want to drive them towards something pink or purple or, or cutesy. And that's really not appropriate. You're looking for something that not only can they hold, but that they can control and operate. And sometimes something small and light like this, the recoil might be significant enough to cause bad habits. And these types of guns typically don't have the greatest sights. So if you're new to shooting and trying to figure out how to shoot and how to stay on target, having ineffective sights isn't really a good way to start. So the next thing that we let her play with is this M&P. And she kept getting drawn to this. And part of the reason I think she kept getting drawn to it is because it's light and small. So you know, it kind of fits in your hand. When you put your hand around it, that smaller grip, even though you only get two fingers on it, it's easy to get your hand around it, you know, coming all the way around to the first knuckle. So with a smaller hand, this is easy to get a hold of. And she did like shooting it. This one has got a really nice, crisp, short trigger. So she was able to pull the trigger and stay on target. It's got really good sights, really easy to see. But the problem she ran into this is keeping a hold of it and handling the recoil. It had a tendency to flip on her a little bit, which then caused her to get into recoil anticipation, you know, and pushing it as she was pulling the trigger. So this one, even though it was a good gun that she could comfortably hold and pull the trigger on, started to drive her towards a recoil flinch because, again, that lighter weight. So even though this might be great for deep concealed carry or as a backup gun, it may not be the best first gun, especially for somebody that has weaker hands and wrists. Now, of course, what would any trip to the range be if you didn't try a Glock, Glock 19? And this particular gun is one that you can pretty much tell anybody, go try a Glock 19 and you'll probably like it. It's kind of the mid-size gun. It's just kind of average in every respect. So if you're looking for something that's not too big, not too small, it kind of fits in there. Now on this gun, you do get a full three-fingered grip so that it's easier to stay, you know, stay a hold of for pretty much anybody. She was able to rack the slide on it, but with some difficulty. Now it's not a really heavy slide, but then again, you run into, if you've got weaker hands, trying to get a hold of it and cycle it, it can be a bit of a challenge, but she was able to do it. One thing that she was not able to do was use the slide stop slide release to drop the slide, so she had to shotgun it, slingshot it. That's not a big deal, but if somebody wants to be able to operate all of the controls, it could be a bit of a problem. She liked it, she shot it well, but she kept coming back to, well, the slide's a little heavy and I can't, I can't operate some of the controls, which then led us to the last gun, the Walther Creed. Now this one is modeled after the PPQ as far as the ergonomics and the styling. It is kind of a lightweight gun. It happens to be a hammer-fired gun and it's got a kind of a contoured grip. Now this actually has a bigger grip lengthwise than the Glock she, you really truly do get a full three-fingered grip with quite a bit hanging below it. It's nicely contoured and the diameter is smaller. And if you look where my thumb comes around on this one, and if I go back to the Glock 19, it doesn't come around as far. So even though it does, you know, I have less hand on it, it's bigger around. And that little bit of difference can make a big difference if you've got smaller hands and you're having a hard time holding it. So as soon as she picked this up, it was comfortable in her hand. Even the contour at the back kind of fits well in. And she really easily was able to wrap the slide. And the trigger is actually quite nice due to the way they've designed the hammer on this. But the cycling basically, I'll pop the magazine out, partially cocks the hammer so that all you're really doing is just bringing the hammer back with absolutely no force. It just slides back and then the last bit breaks it. So she was able to operate the trigger very, very well. She was able to easily hold the gun. She was able to easily cycle it. And this one kind of floated to the top. I think if they'd had one in the store when we were done at the, uh, at the range, she probably would have bought it on the spot. Now this gun, it's a little bit bigger. It's not a deep concealed gun. It can be a great nightstand gun. It could be a purse carry, even though off body carry is not the best thing. And we'll talk, we're going to have other videos in this series along the lines of choosing a gun for. And we'll talk about carry options when, you know, you're not just able to throw it in a pocket of cargo pants or hide it under a shirt. 
But this one here would give her quite a bit of flexibility and it's reasonably priced. So in the end, this isn't saying go pick out a creed, bang, you got your lady's gun. But the concept behind it is look at a few of them, look at something kind of in the midsize. Definitely try a Glock 19 or some of the other manufacturers equivalent. The XDM 3.8 is about the size of this. There's a lot of guns in this sized category if you don't happen to either have a Glock or have a liking for Glock. One of the things that also comes into mind is to take one down on a Glock, you got to pull the slide back a little bit and pull down these little tabs. Well, if you don't have strong hands, that can be a challenge. There's a bazillion little tools out there to help with that. But something like the Creed, you know, you lock it back and flick a lever down. That's a lot easier to do if you don't have strong hands. But resist the temptation to only include little tiny things like this because you know, they may not be the easiest thing to handle and control. And though revolvers do have their place for their simplicity, these little light revolvers can be a bit of a handful and recoil. Now, we didn't bring this, but you'll find that these are popular guns that direct towards people that have weaker hands, simply because of how easy it is to operate the slide. You can cock the hammer on this, and then the slide is very, very light, very easy to do. This one happens to be a 6-hour P938, and there's also a 238, which is a 380 version of this, so that there's something if you like the steel guns, or you like the real low profile, or you want to be able to cut down on the weight of the slide, something like this comes into play. And one of the other ladies that we worked with, who had previously not had any good experiences with automatics, she was revolvers only, in the end ended up choosing a Glock 42. So, you know, this is light, easy to carry, easy to handle, 380. But she had prior experience with firearms, so she was past the whole handling recoil and all of that. And now it was down to just finding something that she could handle and operate. So there's a, you know, there's a lot of choices out there. And it's real easy to get stuck into, you know, saying that, oh, I'm just going to get the tiniest gun I can get or the pinkest gun I can get. Definitely resist the temptation to just grab the biggest, baddest thing you've got, like this Glock 20 10 millimeter. You know, most people aren't going to be hunting bear in their kitchen. Though there's quite a few women out there that could handle this absolutely no trouble, you want to look and focus on things that, especially somebody that's starting out, that are reasonable to handle and that you're going to be able to spend the time with them for them to control. They can grow, graduate up to something along these lines if they're new at it. But you don't want to be one of those people that's you know, got somebody at the range with something that's too powerful for them and that recoils in their hands, flies out of their hands, hits them in the face or any of those. You know, those types of videos are never funny and you don't want to be you know, at the source of one of those. So kind of choose a good cross section. You may have different guns available to you, but chances are pretty good between you, the rental thing at the range, possibly friends you're going to be able to find something along these various lines. There's a number of Smith & Wesson lightweight revolvers in 38. There's a, a whole lot of guns in this size category. And when you get into the single stack, either 380 or 9mm, there's a number of different ones. It's less about the brand and the particular model and more about the cross-section of features and making sure that you don't drive somebody towards, oh, you got to have a little gun or you've got to have a revolver because, man, that's the only thing that's going to be any good for you. And you know, work through a cross-section. Look forward to you know, some other videos in the you know, How to Buy a Gun 4 type series that we're going to work on, covering various different things between different challenges somebody may have physically, you know, concealed carry options versus dress and how you, how you would carry versus how you would dress and some of the challenges that women in you know, the typical U.S. culture at least and the type of clothing that women typically are kind of driven towards wearing versus how you would carry a gun in that type of clothing and lots of other options along like that. If you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, check us out on Facebook and Patreon, and have a great day. Thank you. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified when we publish a new video.